I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm surprised. I really am. Look at this through hole. Watch as I move this hose. I don't even know what I'm gonna do about that. <laughs> these are basically for catastrophe. I'm gonna show you the bilges that were installed. I believe these are factory equipment on the boat and that's super weird because there's no float switch. There's no bilge alarm. This is the water maker. We don't know anything about this system. Don't know what it's gonna to take to resurrect it. Let's change our story, let's change our life. We'll do it our way, our own design. So after our slow sinking a couple of days ago. We need a bilge alarm. I'm gonna turn on the bilge pump. Why don't you go down there and show everybody what's happening. Um. We're sinking. But we think we're sinking from a faulty shower drain. We're not really sure here. And we've learned that we don't have bilge alarms. But I've got at least 10 inches of water here. We were gonna, I was gonna work on the air conditioner because it needs cleaned and used routine maintenance. And I opened up Ella's floor and we've got 10 inches of water in there. All right, so after we get this drained out, pumped out, then we can, uh, try to see if the shower drain is a problem. So Becky thinks the shower hose, the shower hose, because we're a catamaran, the water has to be pumped out. She thinks that the hose may have come disconnected, but she didn't mention it until just now when we found all this water. Because it just sounded different. When I you hear a difference know. in sound, you say something. Well, I thought I was crazy. After our slow sinking a couple of days ago, we decided we needed to make some changes, some upgrades. I went ahead and bought all of this stuff. Today, we're gonna to be working on installing and revamping our entire bilge system. Right on the heels of last week's video, when I overhauled the DC uh, distribution board and I found that the bilge wires were just a hot mess with a lot of loose connections. So we're gonna be running new dedicated wires. Um, I'm gonna show you the bilges that were installed. I believe these are factory equipment on the boat and that's super weird because there's no float switch, there's no bilge alarm, it was completely manual, and there's no easy way to check to see if there's water in the bilges in, in interior. Now, in defense, in the, the engine compartments, there are um, automatic bilges that have a float switch, so that helps, but those are encapsulated. Those are separate compartments from the rest of the boat. So, um, so we bought some bilges, yeah, so this is good. Safety is good, right? That's what they say. Have a look here. So we're gonna have links to everything that we bought on Amazon um, in the video description below, but but uh, these are all from Five Oceans and they are 2,000 gallon per hour bilge pump. Now our boat tends to be pretty dry, so um, these are basically for catastrophe. I don't think that they're gonna get used all that often. If we hear them running, then we've got a major problem uh, on our way. And then uh, we got a couple of float switches here. So my hope is I got four bilge pumps there's another one over here. And we got four sets of new tubing, um, through hulls. I did get some check valves. As I'm filming this today, it's Sunday, and I actually just watched the latest episode of Tula's Endless Summer, and Billy was redoing his bilges. He talked all about check valves and why not to use them. He had a lot of good logic, but we are gonna install some check valves. I'll keep an eye on it. We don't have a wet boat. We have a very dry boat, and so I don't think that there's gonna be a lot of issue with dirt and gunk and things getting in there, but I hear what he's saying. Um, I'm actually gonna have two, uh, two bilges on each side. So I think uh, we have a contingency. I think we'll be okay. Anyway, let me show you what the bilge setup is or was on the boat when we bought it. So this is our original board that the boat came with, the DC distribution board, and it is gone because last week we installed a new one. And um, right here, there was the starboard hull bilge. And then all the way over here, we had the port bilge but the thing is when you turn this on they were pumping they were whale gulper pump things and they would just start pumping that seems really weird to me that you wouldn't at least have a bilge alarm built in to tell you when there's water on board 
um, that needs to be dealt with. I'm really at a loss. I'm at a loss for why it was designed this way, but it, I mean, the boat's built in 1996 and it's made it this long, so apparently it wasn't a mistake. Anyway, we are going to do it differently. Let me show you the uh, bilge setup down here. So this is the starboard shower um, bathroom area, and this is underneath the sink. There's two of these. You see that one right there? And then this one here. This one is the shower drain. This one up here is the bilge pump. So that pump there, it comes down to this one here, which previous owner labeled bilge, so that was nice. But then there's the keels. So you have to flip this inboard to outboard, like so, depending on which side you want to drain. So I'm just kind of playing this out in an emergency situation where I'm trying to get water out of the boat and I've got to come in here and flip this from one side to the other and then they have one through hole that they're sharing which is way over there. So obviously you can tell we got a lot, a lot of cleaning up to do in here and I think I'm just going to drill new through holes because it only makes sense. That one is completely inaccessible. I, I can't reach it at all. Eventually I'm going to get this all cleaned up. None of this is going to be here. You guys really enjoyed the uh, rat's nest that I dealt with last week with the wiring. Well really this isn't much different. This is this is a big mess. Anyway, lots of work. Lots of work to do here to get these cleaned up. So, um, But today is Bill's day. Alright, so I'm going to start with disassembling this. So those um, whale pumps would come up and then they would have this sort of thing at the end of the hose and that would just lay in the bottom of the bilge and then when you turn it on it would suck it up. Okay, so I've got the bilge pump out. So this is a whale gulper uh, 220 diaphragm pump. Um, I'm not going to throw it out. It's in good shape. It's probably had very little use. We're going to clean it up, service it, make sure that it is uh, good to go and it's going to go somewhere. This hose here, way over there. So. Um, when we haul out, we may, we may do away with that. It's above the water line. Um, I need to put a cap in here just in case. There's no anti-siphon or anything on it, so we'll need to be getting rid of it. Um, but for now, I'm just going to cap it. And if I can reach in there, I'll close that through hole. Oh my goodness, guys. I'm going to try to show you this. It's, it's, I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm surprised. I really am. Look at this through hole. There, can you see that? Watch as I move this hose. <laughs> that is unacceptable. That is unacceptable. I don't even know what I'm going to do about that. Because <laughs> I can barely reach up in there, which is probably why it's like that. Oh my goodness. All right, I got a little piece of butyl here, I think. I'm hoping this is gonna go well. I'm really feeling nervous about this. Okay, I've got a nice, a nice bead of butyl all the way around. Hopefully that'll just hold this in place while I get this nut on it. So here's the blue hose. Let's see how this goes. Well, it went on there real nice. Okay, let's see if we can't get this blue hose ran. Okay. Looking good. Okay guys, I spared you the boring part of all of the details of this install, um, but here we are. Here is the final product. So um, it's actually not finalized, so this is this is about 25% done. So we've got one bilge here. We're going to install another one over here on the other side of this is this is our keel. So we'll install another one over here. But this is how it's going to go. So I got a bilge here. I got a float switch over here. Come on, and it 
kicks on, and then this foot switch goes down, it kicks back off. This is the way it's supposed to be. I can't believe it was any way other than that. Like I said before, this boat was built in 1996, and this is how it's been the whole time. So, um, I've got three more of these to do, so I'm not going to bore you with that, but this is a great time to show you some of the upcoming projects that we have to get done before we can take off. Um, one of the really big ones that actually I'm kind of excited about is the water maker. Let me show you what's going on. The water maker is under Ella's bed, so I want to show you that because I might need some help and some suggestions, and I know that a lot of you out there are really good for that. So this is our water maker here. It is an HRO systems a safari escape I have no idea if this is good if this is bad if this is a really expensive system if it's a cheap system um, we have read a little bit of reviews online and it looks like they're really hard to work on so that's possibly a problem so the high pressure pump is right here I don't know when the last time it was ran over here is the 12 volt um, pre-pump and this is interesting here they wrote right on it this is the pre-filter this is it just this teeny tiny little filter is the pre-filter they wrote right on it last changed that sure looks like October 16 that looks like 2010 what do you think guys is that a 10 or is that a 16 or an 18 i don't know what that is but whatever it is it's a long time ago so anyway um this is a project coming up and i think what we're going to do is we're going to try to resurrect this system and uh we might we might uh salvage parts off of it like the high pressure pump um or any of the other gauges and things and kind of build our own system I'm not really sure if you guys have any input on this one please let me know